In this video, we'll take a look at a technique for completing images that have got something missing inside of them or replacing something inside an image. We're going to take a look at a technique which you might have come across inside of Photoshop and there it's called Generative Fill. There's something similar inside of Stable Diffusion and inside of Comfy UI. So this is going to be very much an introduction to a bunch of techniques that have been a, a really deep area of research in, in Generative AI and uh, in image processing. So what you're seeing here is the first glimpse of a bunch of techniques that can become really powerful. What we've got here is a an image which I brought in from Photoshop and I just basically saved it as a PNG with the part of the person's face cut out. You can see roughly speaking what it looked like uh, beforehand when you look at the images on the side there. And what we want to do is to replace it with another person's face. So beautiful woman's head tilted down as though writing. That is the prompt. And if we run that, we'll get something that looks interesting, I'm sure. There we are. And uh, I, I find sometimes with this technique that it produces weird results like this. And what we can do is just increase the grow mask by just give it a bit, bit more room so that it increases uh, th this area of transparency. And I can actually demonstrate this as transparent because I can change the color and you'll see the color changing in the background over here and over here. So it's completely transparent. And that's what a mask is. It's, it's an area of transparency inside an image. Now, if we take a look at this guy here, this is a little bit more successful. We've got the woman looking down at her computer. But this technique really does depend on a number of factors. The first factor is your prompt. If you really get your prompt right, that can work wonders. Let's change this actually to a blue wall so that let's see if we can just remove the woman's head completely. And uh, let's try that. So the prompt is important. The second thing that's really important is the sampler. The sampler has got a number of factors which really uh, impact the result. The most important one is the denoise. So let's go back one seed to where we were and run this again. And what you'll see is that the denoise, generally speaking, in my experience, tends to work a little bit better when it's not exactly at one. So let's go back again and reduce the denoise to 0 0.7, which uh, is a fairly low score in this particular workflow. You can see that it, it, it blends in maybe a little bit too much there, so we can increase it to 0 0.86. Let's try a new seed and see what happens. Mm. <laughs> let's put a shelf on the wall. But you see that it's kind of made the woman's head disappear completely. This is the kind of thing that you can do. You can remove objects using the prompt or you can put objects into the area here. Let's try um, blue-ish glowing orb. And let's see what happens if we try to remove her, uh, to replace her head with a glowing orb. Okay, that's not bad. So you can do all sorts of cr crazy stuff with this technique. The technique is similar, as I say, to generative fill. You select an area and you select an area by creating transparency. Then you bring the image in and then you give the prompt either to remove something or to replace it completely uh, by something new. You make sure the denoise is not 100 and it's not zero. You don't want it to be zero. You probably want it to be between about 0.0. Points six and one that seems to work well if you take it right down to to to, to close to zero you'll just get you know gray and you can grow the mask the area of transparency by increasing this number here let's set this up so that you know how to set it up from scratch normally we have a latent image which comes here and we would choose let's see empty latent image 512 by 512 that's the normal let's get rid of that Let's drag out an image and uh, let's drag out a node or uh, a piece of spaghetti. And we'll choose VAE encode for in paint, which you won't be able to see clearly, but I'll click choose that and we'll zoom in and you can see now exactly what I've chosen. VAE encode for painting. So we're going to have a, an encode coming in from the photo and we're going to actually delete the photo and just do that from scratch as well. And we'll have a VAE coming out from here as well. So we still need to save the image and save the image is going to be as normal. The VAE decode, we select the VAE here and then we select the image here and boom, there we are. Now we can go ahead and 
drag out a line from the pixels and we can choose load image and this loads an image of a train now that train image has no transparency so nothing's going to happen so let me just choose an image that has got some transparency because i created it that way so i created this image which had a sheep on it i don't know if i can show you what the image looked like before it had a sheep on it and uh what we what i did was that i removed the sheep entirely and what we'll do is we'll change the prompt here we can get rid of the hands in the negative and uh just why not go with a bluish glowing orb again let's see what happens with that let's increase the grow mask by but we need to connect the VAE here somewhere. So let's connect it up to this. I'm using Dream Shaper and we can connect the mask up to here so that it will uh, recognize the mask. And let's run this, see what happens. Awesome. So it's given us a little bit of an orb. We can try again to see what sort of results we get this time. We've got a glowing orb there. Now it tends to produce results that are sometimes good sometimes not so good so you have to sometimes run the prompt quite a few times before you get the result that you want um, if i was to say farmhouse which would be a bit more reasonable surrounded by grass what that does is that it asks us to get a farmhouse surrounded by this sort of environment that we see here. So let's see what happens there. And you can see it's put the farmhouse way back there, but we haven't got a good match between the the the, the, the ground here where we've got long grass and the area here. So we can try again. And sometimes you need to play around a, a few times with the, with the prompt to see what results you get. Sometimes um, it's just, it's a question of increasing the, the number of steps Let's increase the steps to 25. Let's go back to this seed here. Let's see if we can get something interesting. Okay, a little bit better. We've got a little bit of a farm, farmhouse in the background and uh, we've got, it's trying to blend the grass in here and it's trying to blend this area of greenery. So you can see it's fairly intelligent, but you can give it too much to do. So small selections tend to work better than large selections. And it's, it's trying its best to make everything fit in, make everything make sense. Um, and the prompt definitely does help. Greenery, let's see if that helps with the results. And obviously as you work through the seeds, you'll find some that work better than others. Mm, that wasn't so successful. Okay, so that looked a little bit more successful. The farmhouse is very, very small indeed. It's kind of like uh, almost in the valley. Okay, so it tries its best. It reminds me a little bit of Photoshop's generative fill in the very early days where it wasn't quite satisfactory, but where you have the right settings, the right idea, the right selection, it can actually create some very interesting uh, inputs. It can remove objects. It can replace, basically fill in however you want the item to be filled in. So it's a very pow powerful technique. There are some mod models, it has to be said, that work better than other models. And if you change the model, that can radically change the sort of image that you get. And there are specific models for this type of uh, process, which is usually called in-painting inside of, inside of uh, Comfy UI. So that's a useful technique. It's not one that I use a lot, but it is an introduction to a powerful family of techniques inside of Comfy UI. And some of those techniques you definitely will probably want to learn as you get more advanced inside of Comfy UI. So this is a quick reminder that I've got a couple of courses which you might be interested in. One is the Learn Generative AI with SDXL, Stable Diffusion and Comfy UI. And the other one is the advanced version of this one. If you want to take a part of these courses, I'll have a link in the description. You may find a discount there. Hope to see you there learning all that we need to learn about Comfy UI and all this kind of fun stuff. When working with image replacement or partial image replacement, there's a very powerful technique we can use to work with images that we've created. We can right click and choose copy and we're going to choose copy clip space and we'll go to the load image and we'll say, hey, go ahead and paste. So now we've got a, an image in the load image node 
And this image uh, is connected up to the VAE encode for inpainting. Now, what we can do is to start working with this guy here. But how do we do that? How do we actually get this guy ready for inpainting? Well, I've applied a small edit here to, to this image. And how did I do that? We went ahead and right clicked and chose open in mask editor. And inside a mask editor, what I can do is just paint. And we can choose the thickness of the paintbrush here. So we'll choose a paintbrush. Just want to address this area here, which is a little bit weak. Just reduce that in size. Like so. And then just paint there. Maybe paint a little bit here as well. And then save to note. We've now got a an image that I've worked with to remove part of the image in the masking process. Now we've got a mask uh, output going to the VAE encoder for in painting. So we could try could try to run this and see what happens. Okay, so you can see now we've got uh, th this output here. I'm going to go here and say, okay, let me just work on one thing at a time. So we'll choose open mask, open image and mask editor, and we'll select this area here. Let me just use my mouse wheel to resize the brush, save to note. I know that that's an area of greenery. So I'm going to go ahead and say, look, um, greenery, grass and greenery. Let's just say that. And this should work with the original image that we output here. And you can see it's, it's done a very interesting kind of road area here where we've got uh, a road running off there. I want to try something a little bit different. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. That looks a little bit well. That looks a little bit good. Um, it's a little bit dark. I will probably want to try that with maybe a lower seed, uh, maybe a, a lower denoise level. Let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. And this area here, I could also edit that area separately in, in a similar way. So you can see how when you've got an image which has been output, right click and copy clip space, come here and paste clip space. And if I wanted to do any further editing, I could right click and choose uh, open in mask editor and I can do a little bit more editing if I wanted to. So let's just go ahead and do a little bit of editing here. say grassy area. See what result we get. <laughs> okay, that wasn't it at all. Sometimes it gets a little bit creative like that. Okay, that's a little bit better. So you can see how we work with this particular function. It's copy, uh, copy clip space and paste clip space. Using the mask editor inside of uh, inside of Cuffy UI means that we can actually edit any image at all and use the uh, use the in painting option for encoding to allow us to edit that specific area whilst leaving the rest of the area uh, rest of the image untouched. Very useful when you have small parts of an image that you want to edit and you just want those parts of the image to change whilst everything else remains the same. Now this is not the be all and end all of uh, generative fill or in painting inside of Comfy UI, but it is a, an indication of just how powerful the software is and how flexible and powerful the software is. Yeah, about you. I wish you were mine.